everybody. Welcome into the Race Hub studio. Caitlin Vinci alongside my friends Regan Smith, Andy Petrie here with me as well. And we are one day away from the Bristol Dirt Race. You both are going to be there. How much are you looking forward to this, Andy? Is this whole show going to be about dirt? It is, yeah. Am I, am I overdressed for it? So am I. I'm excited to see how these guys handle it. I know we got some experience out there in the field, but then. So you're a newbie to, to dirt, but you are not. And a little birdie gave us some photos Wait, of your what? time. I but still didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go. I tried to come back for a second one, yeah. and didn't, it didn't go as well. So but maybe the qualifying blind squirrel theory there? Yeah, Could be. Maybe. Not every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> so you say you didn't know what you were doing. Do you know what you're doing this weekend? You no. Feel, I don't no. know any more about it now than I did then. This is just... A <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, I'm kind of relying on some experience. We're all learning together is what I'm hearing. And we have a very big show uh, with these two guys today on tap. Here's what we have. And Austin Dillon has been able to add some big victories to his racing resume with a Daytona 500 trophy, a Coca-Cola 600 victory and a dirt win at Eldora in the truck series. This week, Jamie Little went off track with Austin to discuss the potential for another dirt win. And a lot of attention will be on Camping World Truck Series rookie Haley Deegan this weekend as the trucks hit the dirt Saturday night under the lights at Bristol. Haley grew up around and got her start dirt racing at the age of of eight. Here's a rough show on tap today. And just last night, we got our first taste of some dirt racing, but of course it was the virtual version. So let's relive the iRace from last uh, One of these things that we've come to expect. When we see iRacing now, William Byron is going to be to the front. I don't care if it's on dirt. I don't care if it's on pavement. Put him on water. Put him on ice. You can put him on over everything. Too. It carries and, and over it to the track. Over. Yeah, he's, he's just he's yeah. very talented, and uh, we're going to rename that series the William Byron Invitation. Yeah. Real racing is what I'm watching with this. I hope it, I mean, that looks like a lot of I hope it's like that Sunday and uh, intrigued to see how wide the track got last night and everything yep. that happened with it and and uh, your guy Tyler. I know last week the right side he didn't want to hit the right side. This week he can probably hit the right side. Well, a he's bit. going to no whether he want to or not. I mean he probably yeah. you saw that. I'm sure that's realistic of what's going to happen. You see these guys sweating. They're competitors at the end of the day, whether it's virtual racing or real racing. So the I race was great, but the real race is looming just ahead for the Cup teams as they take on the brand new challenge of racing in the dirt at the short track of Bristol Motor Speedway. It's the dirt track. Now a little game of I say you say. Since Regan, you claim you don't know much about dirt racing. No, no, we not much. I don't know anything. Uh, all right. Well, we're going <laughs> to test your knowledge with some of the dirt terminology for both of you. So we'll start with Regan. And when I say turn right to go left, you say what? Crash. <laughs> if you turn right to go left, you've already crashed. Listen, that's that when you're that's in right, a race you're car, you're supposed to turn left to go into the corner. That's where you want to go. That's the direction you want to go. This was footage, obviously, from Eldora truck race on the dirt. Now, Andy, you're next. When I say bottom feeder, you say what? Okay, bottom feeder. I know what that means. That's the guys yeah. that are going to run right. So when you say bottom feeder, I think of Austin. Yep. But then Tyler Reddick will be the one up next to the wall. So yeah. maybe we got our bases covered. It'll be interesting to see which <laughs> drivers prefer which when it comes to that. Now, Regan, when I say slide job, you say what? I, I say Dale Jr. That's what okay. I say. Let's say Dale Jr. on that. I, I remember his call for a slide job. Yeah, it's going to be quite a few laps on him. Another unique variable. No live pit stops. This is going to be so interesting to see this. So what about the action on track? Let's take a look at the schedule for the Nuck and Cup Series. We'll have four 15-lap qualifying races to determine the starting lineup for the main events. The starting lineups for the qualifying races in both series was set earlier today by random draw. So let's take a look at what they're going to look like. All kinds of exciting things happening. What do you make of this format with these qualifying races and all that presents? Uh, you know what I like the most about the whole thing is, is when you look at the qualifying races, they really have the good guys spread out, or I say the good guys, the experienced guys. You, you got a nice mix of dirt experience and then maybe champions that don't have a lot of dirt experience. You know what I see? I see opportunity for trouble in those <laughs> things, and I hope that we don't have to go to any backup cars, oh. because these are the cars you have to take to Sunday. Like a team manager <laughs> with your wallet right now, Andy. You know what? Yeah. We don't care if there's trouble. We want to see yes. excitement. We want to see the best drivers in the world well, wrecking we'll each other. Beat the to, out and yeah, going. absolutely. Why not? It'll look like a typical Saturday night. Yeah. Well, how much do you think this track's going to change throughout the course of, of the night, of the weekend, things like that? Well, I that, that think that's to be seen, and that's something that we're going to have to try and understand and try and figure out. That, that's part of why it's difficult for me to talk about dirt, because I don't understand how those changes happen and what you're looking for. Yeah, you got to read the dirt. you got to go in the experience of dirt. We're going to have someone explaining a lot of that later on the show. And the man in charge of this massive project is joining us now from the racetrack, Steve Swift, the Senior Vice President of Operations and Development at Speedway Motorsports Incorporated. Uh, thanks so much for taking some time for us today. We certainly appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. Much a pleasure. 
Much pleasure for us as well. Now, I wanted you to take me through the process from start to finish on how you were able to create this racetrack and pull all of this off. Oh, it's a long process, truthfully. We start talking. Well, Steve, ready or not, here we come. We're going to be there tomorrow <laughs> with all the cup cars, and, uh, and we're going to be, you know, trying to get on that track but we've got weather coming and how are we going to handle that i got so many questions on about you know how does it drain now that you've got all the dirt on the surface uh you know how, how are we going to get uh, the track ready to race and how wet can it be can we still race on for the years on the dirt and now we want to bring up our own virtual track map for the dirt track at bristol motor speedway to talk it's a challenge to me the biggest challenge would be pulling off a pit road onto the race track. oh true good good thinking there it, it's a learning experience for all of us is kind of what i am hearing and a lot to look forward to still to come here though on that group could potentially be a shoe in for a victory this weekend regan I, I think it's definitely a good group first off when you think about the fact that all these guys the success they've had the fact that they've made it to the cup series that's a big deal the, the one that stands out to me that just a little bit right there is crack doesn't go to the top if the track stays down just a little bit i think that's where he might uh, really excel yeah besides my obvious pick austin dillon i look at kyle also is the simple fact that they've got wins already they can yeah. take oh, yeah. chances True. they can take oh, they can a little bit more risk yeah you can take yeah. more risk because you know you're in the playoffs do whatever you have to do to win there'll probably be some sleepers in the field you Absolutely. don't know who's going to step up and, and be you know like bubba wallace did it Yep. At Eldor. It's going to be hard to say, but some votes for Christopher Bell and Kyle Larson potentially for the victory. Now, let's take a look at the long what Haley can do in Bristol. Is it fair to put a spotlight on her potentially being one of the, the drivers that can really compete for the victory, Regan? No. No, I don't okay. think it is. And, and, and let, let me explain why. Haley. I don't know. I don't know. I think <laughs> she might be one of those different that can surprise here. you. Get in there. Yeah, I think she expects to. She's going to have a shot. Didn't say it would surprise me if she yeah. did well. I just don't think we should put necessarily that much pressure well, on her. Well, I'm going to be watching. If, if she wins, great. If she <laughs> finishes 10th, great also. It's, yeah. it's still been a good day for her. I, I, I do. Such a great conversation there. Love hearing all those stories from her. And you have a personal connection because you actually went to her driving school. Yeah, she had a uh, driver development program. And he hear talk about her connection to the sports still well she was responsible for a lot of drivers that went through her program also uh, a couple that come to mind the year that i was there danica patrick sarah fisher some very big name drivers. amazing career she's had i mean not not just as a woman driver but just as driver period winning 24 hours and all the things she's done setting records at talladega button there the, yeah, yeah. The button yes. to slow it down ernie, yeah, ernie yeah, had that button, that. <laughs> just to clarify that driving school wasn't dirt right no, no. <laughs> it was a road course driving school. I didn't know much about that. He probably time. did yeah. see some dirt. Because right. <laughs> we're talking about the dirt race because it's coming up at Bristol. But before that, Saturday, April 3rd, Major League in with Todd and Phil, of course. Phil Parsons, Todd Bodine with me now to talk all about the Camping World Truck Series, the dirt event at Bristol. It's right around the corner. What are you most looking forward to with this event? God, this first race? of all, let's applaud Jerry Caldwell. Yeah. On this. But I'm telling you, this weekend, I, I don't think it's going to be topped. Yeah. You know, I grew up in upstate New York and New England, and all we had excited about this weekend. We all are excited. There's so much to look forward to when it comes to this race. I want to draw some comparison. What differences do you think we'll see at Bristol versus Eldora? Well, I talked to a lot of the drivers today and listened to a lot of the interviews, and uh, because the bottom of the racetrack loses that moisture, but they feel like the way this racetrack is like eight or nine feet deep at the mm -hmm. bottom of dirt, that may it may retain some of that moisture and keep, stay longer. We know we're, they're going to go to the top, but they also said this racetrack unlike Eldora doesn't really build a cushion like okay. Eldora does so they think they're going to be racing all over the racetrack and they think the racing is going to be really good oh I sure hope so that is good news for us if the racing is going to be good now the last time out I uh, as a driver that needs to just manage the, the weekend at Bristol to move out of there clean well the one guy that I look at <laughs> further up just finish 10th get right because if you end up 15th or 20th then you're going to start in the back in uh, Richmond so Manage your expectations, do what you can do, and get it to the end. You know, the thing is, uh, we have a large field of trucks here at right. Bristol. There's 44 mm -hmm, yeah. trucks, so some of our cousins during the qualifying races to see who makes this show. Well, you mentioned the big field, so let's take a look at some of the non-regulars who are entered, and there are a bunch of that, but what is unique also about the format, Phil, for the way we're going to set the field? It's a little bit like what we've done at Eldora in the past. Very, very unique, yes, and that's how we're going to set the field. Sounds like a lot of math. I don't know. And, and you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of math. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, Phil, uh, we don't know these qualifying races are going to be incredibly important. What I love about this event is there's just so many unique things, so many unknowns that's going to make it very interesting for all of us. And one additional thing that is unique. This doesn't go well, <laughs> husband and wife. What do you think? They've raced against each other enough. I don't think divorce is even in the picture, but you know, it's it's going to be so much fun to watch Jessica race in the trucks. You know, we've, we've of course, I've rooted for Studi. She's an accomplished her truck she races. Is. This yeah. is not yeah. a novelty. She knows what she's doing. Absolutely. It'll be interesting to see if both Friesens are in.
in the race. Well, thank you to the two of you. We will see you again on Saturday for pre-race for the Truck Series. Which